and starting a bit below. Uh, good afternoon from a sunny Tanzania. Uh, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, thank you for joining us today on the first of our uh, trade webinars. Uh, what we have. What we hope to do over the years and months, of the weeks and months to come, is continue to update you through this, through this mechanism. Uh, so, without further ado, let me kick off. But let me just start with an apology. Apologies, we've had a few uh, technology problems, uh, but we managed to get the internet working. All the technology is working, so let's fire away. First of all, I really want to tell you a little bit about uh, uh, to lay it out for you. Uh, so, there's two areas that I want to talk about today. The first is uh, some of the under-the-bonnet stuff that we've, be, we've been doing in terms of our safety and operations. Uh, and then at the end, a little bit about some of the commercial refocus that we're going to place on uh, within the company. Okay, so those are the two topics. But before I go into that, let me talk a little bit about under-the-bonnet stuff. Uh, so here at Atlantic Aviation, uh, sorry, at, uh, here at Coastal Aviation, my apologies, <laughs> here at Coastal Aviation, We've been focused on some of the values that we want to uh, uh, prioritize again. Top of the list is, uh, is our safety standards. So we really need to put that at the top. Uh, on the foundation within that is the customer is very much the center of all that we do. So we need to really put that in perspective. And then flanking that is we need to internally operate as one team, but also we need to be quite agile. Uh, agile and nimble, because that's what you expect of us as customers. Okay, so that's kind of really a little bit of under the bonnet of what we as a company represent here at Coastal Aviation. So, on this theme of safety at the top of our operations is that we've spent a lot of time re-looking at our business. We've taken feedback from many of our customers, we've taken feedback from the traveling public about what it is that people expect. and. Uh, Fundamentally, what our customer proposition is, many of our people come in on their private jets, or they come in off a 777 or a 787, and then they walk on to a smaller aircraft. And quite often, that's a quite an unnerving process uh, that we need to manage better. So first on that list is, we are going to put safety back at the top of the agenda. That means that uh, people will feel that safety, will feel that reassurance of how we are as an operator. We also obviously need to focus on our operations. So you expect reliability, you expect punctuality, you expect, you expect consistency. Uh, and that really does mean that we need to put in a lot of uh, foundation blocks in terms of how we plan, in terms of how we hold our people accountable, how we standardize and train people to deliver that. So uh, over there you've got the yin and the yang uh, uh, logo, and really the two have to operate together. You can't have a safe operation uh, without an operation. You can't have operation without safety. So the two need to go very much hand in hand. But so first on what, one of the things that we've been doing, you may have noticed since the beginning of the year, uh, we've been operating a safety pilot scheme. So basically, when we have junior pilots, uh, we actually put a senior captain with him all the time. So if you are less on your hours, then you will have two pilots. Uh, and then if you're more senior, we've, uh, we've allowed those, uh, th those uh, pilots to operate safely. But that's not necessarily a clear message. So we are moving to what we call the multi-crew cooperation, MCC. And all around the world that you'll see, this is actually a rating on pilots' licenses. So we are refocused on how to do that. In over the last seven, eight months, we've been training and retraining all of our people, all of our pilots. So we've rewritten the SOPs, the standard operating procedures, to mimic what we need in a multi-crew cockpit. Now that journey in itself has required regulator approval, we've had to work with our staff, we've had to work with all of our pilots. It's been an intense process over the last eight months. And you can imagine, slap in the middle of that was the peak season. So continuing to keep that training and that reinforcement of what we needed to be was quite critical. So actually, if you look under the bonnet of what we've done, we've had eight classroom modules. So some of these modules are four days at a time. So of our 70 odd pilots, we've put them through eight classroom modules and four implementation phases. 
So only after that can we actually go live with it. So it's been a monumental task and really within the training, what's it all been about? It's been about crew resource management, it's been about communications, it's been about teamwork and it's all about enhancing safety. That's the goal of what we've been doing. But all of that takes a, a, a rethink of what we do. So to give you an example is when we operated the safety pilot scheme, we had a pilot flying and the other pilot was there for safety reasons. Often with his hands crossed, his requirement was not to intervene unless there was a risk. With the MCC cockpit, that's not the case. The two of them operate as a team. And very much one plus one is greater than two. So often you'll have the pilot flying, he'll be doing the flying, whereas the pilot monitoring will be doing a lot of the ground communications, a lot of the communications, he'll be looking out for traffic, he'll be looking out for terrain, managing the weather, etc., etc. So with that, we believe that we create cross-checks and balances that we can operate together. After all of this, I'm proud to announce that from Thursday, 1st November 2018, coastal aviation will only be a two-pilot operation. So whether you're flying our caravan aircraft type, or whether you're flying the Pilatus PC-12, there will be two people up in the cockpit. And that's a massive statement that we recognize that we need to bolster that reassurance with our traveling customers and rebuild and enhance the safety that we've been come to know by. So, multi-crew cooperation, has, that's what we've been rolling out. Other things that we've been doing also is that we've started to upgrade our fleet. So, uh, I know a lot of feedback that uh, some of our fleet were looking very tired. We now have three new caravans in the fleet. Uh, and to give you an idea is, if you look at these two pictures here, the, the, the picture in the, in the lower portion is actually what we call the standard king caravan. Uh, so you'll see the avionics, there are a lot of uh, displays around here, the analog type displays, uh, all the way around. So it's quite a busy cockpit. Uh, but what we're moving to is the Garmin G1000 caravan cockpit. And you can see, much simpler, much more ergonomically designed. It's designed to actually put the information for the flight crew in front of them. So typically, you know, the main T flying, those that fly will know there's a core T the pilots use to fly. But that's all on this. So you've got the compass, you've got the attitude, you've got the bearing, the speed, and all of that on one display. On the other side, it's mirrored, uh, which isn't necessarily the case on this, on, on this uh, cockpit arrangement. But my favorite, actually, is the center screen. And you can see the yellows, the greens, the reds. That particular screen monitors traffic, terrain, and weather. So typical cockpit technology is if it's screaming at you, if it's a red color, then something's wrong. Other than that, it should be fairly placid. Uh, but it actually puts it in front of the pilots. So this comment around is designed to reduce the workload of our pilots. So let's put all the information that we can and the technology there so that the pilots can actually worry about safe flying. That's the, that's the, uh, the intent. Uh, so we do have the three new caravans. We are actually, today as I speak to you today, we are the largest caravan operator in sub-Saharan Africa. So at this point in time, we have 22 caravans in our fleet. We are looking to uh, reduce them to three. So now that we're out of the peak season, we will be taking three of the older caravans out of the fleet. But uh, our target is to upgrade the fleet three every year. So when I look at the remaining 19 aircraft, we have seven of the Garmin, the Garmin 1000 aircraft type. Uh, of the remaining 12, we have some that are a little bit newer. So the Garmin 750s, 550s, and so on. And there are three that are, are the older type that need uh, immediate attention. But we are looking to upgrade the fleet three at a time. Uh, with the 12 remaining aircraft, that should make it four years. But my guess is somewhere between two and a half and three years, we will have upgraded the entire fleet. So that's hopefully a positive message to uh, all of your customers. The other thing that was really, really important was reinforcing our safety culture and uh, critical within that 
process is the pilots. The pilots are the most important aspect, or the, the last barrier for any safety incident. So we now have implemented quite a lot of rigorous processes. So on the top of this one, you'll see we've implemented a rigorous recruitment process. So to give you an idea of that, there are 17 steps before a cadet pilot can join coastal aviation. You, you may think well, 17 steps is a lot of steps, but if you look at actually cadet pilots going through their training, the, 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 ter the, the, uh, the attrition rate is quite high, in fact. But if, you, if we spend more time on the recruitment and selection process, the actual net effect is almost 90 plus percent of successful cadet pilots. So that in itself pays for itself. Having that rigor means that we're getting the right quality of pilots in our cockpit. But that's not the end of it. We do continue to train, evaluate, and we have ongoing assessments as we go along. So some of our pilots have 14, 15,000 hours on the clock. Others have three, five, seven hundred hours on the clock. What we're trying to do is make sure that we uh, develop our junior pilots, learning from the senior guys, and actually have a cadre of pilots that are exceptional within this environment. So that's our commitment back to our pilot population. The next most important, most uh, a very critical element in the whole chain is the engineers. So over the last few months, uh, we've actually implemented a lot of snag reporting, which comes with no blame. So often organizations actually scare pilots and engineers in not reporting. We haven't done that. If you look at our aircraft tech logs, you will find them spattered with incidents and issues that we've dealt with. That gives us learning and continuous improvement. And, and, and my challenge is that, you know, I've worked, worked in Africa and within this environment, environment for a long time. And uh, all, all around the world, you'll find most aircraft tech logs are completely unblemished. Ours are not. They are working documents. They are documents that prove that we are maintaining and managing our aircraft. So that will continue to do. And we feel very proud of that. But, but within, within that, that, we also need to ensure that our engineers are trained, that they're compliant, and they're following through the process. process. So, so over the course of this last peak period, we have had a lot of uh, engagement with Cessna as our manufacturer of the caravan, a lot of engagement with them to actually solve issues. And they've actually helped us where it's not stipulated in the manual to actually find the solution that's, that's necessary. So that whole process is very healthy, and that's the way all airlines should operate. That's what you expect from your IATA agents, your IATA airlines, and your IKO airlines. So that's the standard that we are building at Coastal. So you can come to expect, this is what we do. And then the final piece extends throughout the company, and that's around the safety culture. So the ability for people to speak up when they see things are going wrong, there's much more active reporting. So we have uh, safety reports generated every day. Those come to me as the managing director directly. So through that, we have a lot more management focus on what's going on in the organization. I do have to say, though, that this is uh, like uh, sailing a big ship. It'll take us 10 miles before we're pointing in the right direction and probably, probably another 100, 100 miles before, before we start to get to the momentum and speed that we need. So, so all, all of that you'll see is the safety culture at Coastal is pretty impressive. impressive. You, will, you, don't you don't need to talk to me to see that. that. If, if you, you talk, talk to pilots, if you, if you talk, talk to engineers, if, if you talk, talk to the ramp staff, you will see how we operate. And even with your with your passengers, is all operators within Tanzania, we have a standard operating procedure. And this guides how you can operate the aircraft. So I'll give you an example is that typically uh, when aircraft are taxiing at airports, they need to be around 15 knots. That's the speed that, that you're supposed to taxi at. But regularly I've seen many of our competitors, have my pilots describe them as kamikaze pilots, where they're really going really fast taxiing around. That's not the way to do stuff. That's, that's not, and that's, that's not what this industry needs. This industry needs us to put safety at the top. And that's what we're, we're trying to do again and again and again. 
And if I just pick the last bullet on this particular slide, is that what we need is we are working towards a continuing, improving organization. So this isn't the end of it all. Every time I come and talk, hopefully I can tell you a little bit more of the journey as we go through. Okay. Moving on, on the operational side, we've implemented an ops control center. Uh, and really, uh, the Ops Control Center is about centralizing the control of our operations in one location. So it, it enables us to make quite dynamic decisions when the aircraft is, the operation is disrupted in any way. So when we have weather issues, or flight crew issues, uh, shortage of flight crew, or anything going on, we can actually resolve that issue from the center in Dar es Salaam and provide solutions to those locations. And you'll see actually, I mean, this is a, a, a depiction of a, another control center, but you'll see the gentleman there operating, he has three or four screens, he's able to manage the operation, he's able to follow the flight and actively know where, in terms of satellite tracking, where the aircraft is. So all of that should be able to uh, translate into giving all of our customers the ability to know where you where you are, when you're going to reach in dynamic uh, in a dynamic environment. So this we continue to follow through on. Just to kind of uh, put it all back to perspective. So. Uh, I didn't, I didn't introduce, introduce myself, myself here, but uh, my, my name is Shaf Saeed. I'm, I'm the Managing Director of Coastal Aviation. I've, I've got half of our organization structure here. And, and these are, are the operational guys. guys. So, so on, on the, the other side, side we have finance, finance HR, commercial, commercial and IT. But, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about the operational expertise here. here. So, so amongst, amongst these five individuals, there are 135 years of aviation management experience. So that's roughly, uh, I think that's 27.2 years of experience on average per manager there. And the pedigree that you have with these individuals is very impressive. If I start with this gentleman here, Matt Adamson. Uh, Matt arrived in last week uh, and will be heading up the safety and quality department. So previously we've had uh, a little, a little bit fractured, fractured in terms of uh, safety and quality, but we're, we're now going to pull it all together, together so again we can drive that forward. forward. Matt comes, comes from Flybe, so Flybe is the largest uh, turboprop regional carrier in Europe. I think they have somewhere near 100 uh, Dash 8s and ATR aircraft. So he comes with a lot of pedigree on dealing with bigger scaled issues. And the next gentleman along, the, along towards the right is Captain Maynard Mukumba. Maynard has been with Coastal for a long amount of time, but uh, what he brings to the party is that he knows Tanzania. He's operated the caravan for a long time, he's operated the PC-12, he's operated 737s, Dash 8s, and other bigger aircraft. But what he knows is, he knows the topography of Tanzania. So when we're talking about flying to Jongomero, for example, He's, He's able, able to, to tell you there's a tree, there's a mast here, this is the direction, this is the approach that you can have. In, in, a, in an environment like Tanzania, he's worth his weight in gold, and how he imparts that to all of the flight crew is really kind of quite critical. Next along, the, along to the right is Julianne Walmsley. Julianne Walmsley is responsible for ground operations, so actually maintaining that the punctuality of our aircraft, that the punctuality of our operation, being able to provide that information to customers on uh, delays or early arrivals, uh, being connected with that, but actually to ensure a smooth ground operation. So it's not just about fast, 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 because quite often that has safety risks. This is about steady and constant progress and making sure that the aircraft are able to turn around in the requisite time. So Juliana, she comes with a lot of big airline experience. She used to uh, run Western Europe for EasyJet. In her last job, she used to run uh, the ground handling company in uh, Cote d'Ivoire. So she used to be the managing director of NAS in Cote d'Ivoire. 
The final, final uh, gentleman, gentleman on the right is Tommy Andino. Andino. Tommy's the maintenance director. He's been around for uh, around, uh, I believe, two, three months now. But he comes from a big pedigree of running many, uh, of running engineering for some big names. He used to be the director of engineering for Virgin America, for Spirit Airlines in the States, plus GMG Airlines in Bangladesh. Recently, actually, he used to be the director of engineering for Mokunele Airlines in Hawaii. So essentially, Mokunele Airlines is a caravan operator that operates in Hawaii, and he brings not only engineering experience, but experience of this aircraft type. So overall, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a pretty strong team. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's not many airlines that can put up 135 years of aviation experience. But that's the pedigree of what uh, uh, coastal aviation has chosen to do. Okay, so enough about safety and operations. A little bit about commercial. Uh, and to be perfectly frank is that we've, uh, we've had to... We've made a little few, a few uh, uh, mistakes in how we've engaged with the market. So time now to reset ourselves. Time now to come back to the basics. And on this particular slide, there are four things that we're working on. The first is the contact center. So whether you need to email us or phone us, we need to be available for you when you need us. So we're looking at shift coverage so that we can better manage uh, America, for example, Europe tends to be easy for us, but being available for the American market and equally for the Austra Australasian market and the Asian market. So a lot around that, but kind of really essentially is to make sure that our consultants can give you a consistent response. Whether you're calling consultant A or consultant B, you should get the same high level of experience. So. That's number one on the grid. Number two then is around payment channels. So, you know, we live in the world where you can bank online or bank in the palm of your hands and you can do so much in the palm of your hands. So what we want to do is offer payment channels for many of our customers uh, where they can choose to, uh, to pay online, to pay in the local bank, to pay via your mobile phone. So all of that stuff should be announced uh, hopefully early November. Uh, that's the plan for that. Item number three then is around field sales. So we want to send people, we want to allocate sales account managers to deal with each of your sales. So there will be, uh, we're looking to put it, we also, sorry, we already have a team, we already have Jan Paolo as the sales manager. Underneath him, we're going to build a team of at least four that will distribute the customers that we deal with. And actually, they'll be the front end for you. So they will be the people that are supposed to connect with you, communicate with you on a regular basis to provide that agility that makes it, work, that makes it easier for you to contact us. And underpinning all of that is uh, a few of you may have had agency agreements for the year 2018. We're looking to actually revamp those and have much more meaningful arrangements for next year. So with, with each of these agreements, we will reach out to each of the, the trade to talk you through uh, this particular arrangement and actually uh, provide the feedback and support that you need. So through these four elements, what we're trying to do is get back on the front foot and actually send our people, make it easier for you to contact us and for our people to reach out to you as well. So, you know, I think, you know, over the last few weeks and months, uh, we've had to reshift from where we were then to come back and be much more approachable. Okay, final slide on the commercial uh, setup is just to explain a little bit about what, what the commercial organization structure looks like. So, we are looking for a commercial director hoping to have one uh, mid-November before December with a bit of luck. So he or she will own that portfolio. And then there are three, underneath him, there are three direct sales contact people. So Gianpaolo is the sales manager. 
Next one along is Martin. Martin is our reservations manager, call centre manager. And then Alessandro, who operates the, uh, the dedicated charter division. So that's the three front end guys. We also have Fatima, who runs coastal holidays. We then have Gabrielli, who runs marketing. And then two guys here who run the network and re revenue distribution. So Enrico and Shagan. Just to explain a little bit of what that structure does. So these three are for direct contact with the customer. That's what these three are. The centerpiece, Coastal Holidays, is a specialized product. Marketing is marketing. And then the two guys on the end, Enrico and Shagan, are really looking at how we plan for the future. So in terms of uh, fares, in terms of where we fly to, in terms of how we distribute the product, all of that will fall under that area there. OK? okay. So on that note, I think that's the last of my slides. And I'm on to Q&A. So thank you for raising some of the questions through the, uh, the YouTube chat area. And uh, I'll read the first question. Does Coastal have plans to increase routes? Many are interested in West Tanzania. Uh, that's a great question. Obviously, we are, we, we're trying to stabilize our ship, get back to the good safety and operational standards, and then we are looking at inc increasing our, uh, our, our footprint in Tanzania and, in fact, East Africa. So that process is ongoing. Uh, let, let me just leave it at that, but we will update you as we go through and organize to fly to different new destinations and further afield. Next question I've got on the, on, uh, from you is, how will MCC affect agent sales? Simple answer is, I hope very, very positively. I hope you are able to engage with your customers and reassure them on how good we are in terms of safety. For us as Coastal, we are taking a seat out that was sold for passengers occasionally. We are actually... Uh, We've invested a lot of money in getting training for our pilots. But actually, we have no intention of passing that on to anybody else. This is what Coastal is. We want it to be the safe and reliable organization. So the question is, how will MCC affect Asian sales? I hope very positively, and you will be able to sell far more on us. Next question you have here is, does Coastal have a mobile app? Uh, we don't at the minute. We are looking to refresh our web platform uh, and that will uh, roll out over the next few months, uh, weeks and months as we go through. On the back of that, we will explore whether there's a, a requirement for a mobile app, but at this point in time, we don't have it in our plans, but we'll explore it. So a good question, a good piece of feedback. Next question there is, will agent commission be increasing? What is the criteria? Uh, a great question. Uh, we are in a commercial business, and uh, we need to be competitive. Uh, but equally, you expect us to make money. If we're not making money, then how can we do things safely? And history says that those people, that those airlines that can't make money or have a liquid cash flow, they start to cut corners. So we don't actually want to be anything like that at all. We do want to be the safe guys, we want to be the reliable guys, and we want to provide fair and competitive pricing. That also involves the commission as well. Uh, so at this point in time, I don't think there is uh, a need to push up commission. We believe we've set a, a good standard, but actually with your own sales account managers, or myself, please reach out to me and we'll have those conversations. Bottom line is, commission should not be uh, free for either of us. This is about a partnership. This is about you growing and uh, both of us growing and developing our businesses mutually together. OK, the next question I've got on the list is, will, char will the charter flights also employ the MCC? Absolutely. Absolutely. So all of our operations, whether it's a scheduled service, or whether it's a charter service, whether it's a caravan, or whether it's a PC-12, they will all be two pilots. That's the standard that we've set. The only times that we can fly single pilot, or that we would do, is non-commercial. 
So for example, for a aircraft positioning flight, or a ferry flight, or perhaps even cargo. But commercial passenger traffic, whether it's charter or schedule, will be an MCC flight. Okay, next one I've got on the list is, will Coastal always operate caravans and PC-12s? Uh, that's an easy question and a simple question. So our business model at the time being is, that's the fleet types that we have. We do have some smaller aircraft, the 206s, we have a 172. Uh, we haven't seen very much demand on those aircraft types. So at the moment, they're assets that are used virtually 50, 60 hours a year. Now, all of, all of you are business people, so you'll appreciate that if an asset is sat on the ground, it's not making money. So probably we will uh, sell those aircraft. But our core fleet of PC-12s and caravans, they're here to stay. Will we go into other fleet types? Probably yes. We continue to look at uh, what the market needs, volumes of traffic, uh, new footprints of destinations. We continue to look at that and we'll continue to evaluate and update you as the time is right. Okay, I think there's one more question coming up, which is around Uganda. Uh, yes, we'd love to do Uganda. Uh, we already have, so we have Tanzania. We operate to the most number of airstrips in Tanzania, uh, proudly. We also fly into Mozambique. So we have an air operator certificate in Mozambique. We fly, there's three ways of getting to Kenya with coastal aviation. We fly to Rwanda as well. Of course, Uganda will be a natural progression. So uh, as that market picks up at the right time, I'm sure we will engage in that market. Okay, I'm going to turn around to my colleagues. Are there any other questions? No? That brings us up to uh, as 35 minutes. I hope you've managed to hear this. Uh, apologies for the technology. Uh, we are in Tanzania, so uh, hopefully this will beam out pretty, uh, pretty respectively. Respect respectively. Uh, and I just really want to end to say thank you very much for all the support that you give us. Thank you very much for supporting us through uh, a difficult 12 months. So we've now lapped ourselves. I hope from uh, today's uh, webinar that you'll feel the confidence and reassurance of what Coastal are doing to put us, up, to put us as your first choice. The question was asked, are we going to increase commissions or tariffs based on this? We don't have any plans to do that. This is us looking back at ourselves and saying, this is the only way to be. Now, many of you may have known our founder, Nicola. So Nicola uh, was a very special man. He created this company over three decades. And his, was, his spirit was around pioneering, about agility, and about being the safe guys. None of that, I believe, has changed. So we will continue to reinforce that and continue to be your carrier of choice. So without further ado, let me close this session. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your very precious time. Thank you for your business. Uh, if you do have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Other than that, asante sana.